actually do some research. Oh my god, guess what I found? I found the civil, a California, the California Civil Servant Manual. And it okay. goes in, it goes into exactly what can and cannot happen. And it actually says that if these attorneys in any capacity at the county council or city council, uh, if they are not with a constitutional oath, they, they, uh, they are at, uh, intruding upon the civil servant offices. That's one thing. And then here's the other part. Uh, I found a section inside of that and because they've got different civil servant uh, things that you can click on for the code. And it's right. the, it is the State Personnel Board. Let me read this one section. It will make a lot of sense to you. It states okay. uh, at uh, California Government Code Section 19800 through 19810, the State Personnel Board is hereby vested with the jurisdiction and responsibility of establishing and maintaining personnel standards on merit basis and administrating merit systems for local government agencies, that includes your franchise like the DMV, where such merit systems of employment are required by statute as a condition of the state-funded program or federally granted in-aid program established under the following federal laws, the Social Security Act the Public Health uh, Service Act, the Federal Civil Defense Act. These are the areas that they're getting grant funds, and the key point here is they're getting it under the Social Security accounts. Right. Yeah. Like what I said, right? <laughs> it, I validated exactly what we were saying. <laughs> and it goes into uh, it goes into how they got all these memorandum of under uh, understanding that ties into all of these agencies. And if you look up the word agency, it may not be the the uh, the public civil servant. It could be uh, an instrumentality, is what they call it. It's an instrumentality. So over at Thomas's uh, site. I've been taking and clicking just clips uh, to post over there for uh, future references uh, as I'm flowing through this. But uh, uh, at the bottom it says, okay, uh, as used in this chapter, local agency means city, county, city, and county, districts, subdivisions of the state, or independent instrumentalities. That includes right. banks and attorneys. Yeah. <laughs> so all these guys are getting grant funds under this particular code authorizes the state personnel board of which I'm telling you, this is uh, the whole civil manual, civil servant manual is under the state personnel board. I located, I found it, and I just wanted to report back to you uh, what I found this morning. Okay. Now I've got some stuff for you. Okay. I went into the statutes of large, okay, all the way back to volume one, and uh, did a search for curator in all of them that I had downloaded. Uh huh. The first one that I came up with curator was in uh, volume 41. I should be writing this down, right? Well, uh, yeah, since I can't send this shit out right now. Okay. Uh, the damn internet's down here, and it's uh, hardware with the damn phone company. Okay, volume uh, 41, and what, uh, what year was that? Well, that was around 1920, okay? Okay. Now, the only curator that I found was at Philadelphia. Okay. The Phil Philadelphia Mint. None of the other mints have a curator. Only the Philadelphia Mint does. Wasn't that where the Constitution or the Declaration was signed? Yes. That is the de jure seat of government for the United States of America. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, why would you have a curator at the Mint? Well, because there has to be an established resident agent uh, somewhere in the country. No. Because you have to have a means to give the 
value of your birth weight in gold. Mint, they do it with metals, so you have to give your birth weight in gold. And it comes from that Philadelphia Mint. That's, you know, that's a good connection. I like that. Now, the other one is in that same uh, area. Okay, you had the Treasury Department, and then you had uh, the Independent Treasury, okay, uh, in this one uh, section in the statute. Uh, in there, it was talking about all these different organizations. Well, it came down to the IRS, and basically the IRS is supposed to be there to return the unlawful taken of funds. Okay, it's, um, our, our, I'm starting to lose you a little bit on the, on that. Uh, okay, the so when okay. you do a 3949... Let me up here, okay? Yeah. Please throw a little more into it, okay? The IRS takes the assets from the DTC. Yeah. Okay? We have to come in and put our claim in to cancel the debt and pick up the funds that are owed to us. Okay. Now I'm following you. Go ahead. Yeah. See, so where do we need to go? We need to go to the International IRS Commissioner in Philadelphia. Okay. Under our 98 number, and basically then we notify them that we are shutting down that Social Security account and all, uh, all uh, underwritings. We are refusing to be an, any further an underwriter to any of their bullshit. <clears throat> okay, the International IRS Commissioner in Philadelphia is the proper person to go to, is what you're saying. Yeah, and see, I went there to, I sent some stuff off to him before, back in 2010. Uh -huh. But what I was doing at that point in time, I wasn't, didn't have all the right understandings and everything when I was going there. Yeah. Okay. So are you uh, saying that the, also, cur the curator, uh, are you saying that the curator that you located inside the U.S. Treasury is no longer a consideration? Well, no, it's still a possibility that uh, we could go into uh, uh, them, but primarily it's going to be through the IRS, the vast majority of it, uh, for anything that deals with our taxes. Yeah, because now our state yeah. is going to have to be under the treasurer, and we will be going in, uh, putting a claim in, and see... Uh, there was also one other about the War Powers Act uh, that you had to be a uh, guardian or a curator to put a bill in for for an incompetent uh, serviceman. Okay, so we have to be like when we have the DD two fourteen. We are the curator that goes to the Secretary of the Treasury and puts our claim in or our voucher or whatever into the Treasury. I can see that now, being that way because I looked up the definition of a curé and a curator and it uh -huh. uh, it drives exactly with what you're talking about. Yeah, now we will be coming in as the pro-curator uh, for our a state, our American estate, and we will be operating under that 98 series number mm -hmm. to put our uh, charge in. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, the certificate of live birth with our account number, our, our, our ADR number, to uh, basically put that claim in, and uh, uh, we will put it into the Treasury. And whether we go into the Treasury out of Philadelphia to make that happen, I don't know. I'm still checking on that. Well, let me just... Let there's me... another one for you. Okay, okay, go ahead. Yeah. As long as we're dealing with international. Yeah. Okay. There is private international law and public international law. 
Okay. Yeah. You can look those up in Wikipedia. Yeah, I know that they're there. Okay. okay. Then there is an office that is a uh, advisory, uh, legal advisory uh, group for international uh, items in the Secretary of State's office. Uh, that would be the old uh, Hillary Clinton office, or are you talking about the International uh, Secretary of State? I'm talking about the United States of America okay. Secretary of State. Okay. And there's an international uh, office there for a legal advisor yeah. uh, there to uh, interface for us in uh, the international laws. Okay. Okay. Um. So are they the ones to go to to ask about the live birth and, and all the other stuff we want to do well, under the no, all they're basically to basically, uh, yeah, process. Uh, you can ask them how, uh, what uh, all the ramifications are and also about your international passport. I see. Oh, yeah, because the passport. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. See where I'm coming? This is, and it's all under that private international law. Private International. Okay. All right. Um, Let's see, I had all this shit back in 2010, in the summer of that year. Well, what would you think about that? I have it all pulled together What you think? What would you think about that uh, clip I read out of the Civil Service uh, Manual for the State of California? Well, I think, yeah, we're starting to come across this stuff. Okay? Yeah. Now we know where we're, we're supposed to be looking in some of this stuff. Well, We've been looking and guided in all the wrong places uh, down the road here. And we kept trying to do something, but we were staying in the public realm. We you, never did get out into the civil or the private realm. Do you think that that Civil Defense Act is connected to the War Powers Act? Some of it is, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's how they're getting grant funds is basically under the uh, the Emergency Banking well, Act. The, the way they're getting grant funds is not really, per se, grant funds. It's basically uh, they're getting leasing rights to our stuff by our underwriting. Well, I'm still going to I'm going to be working on the underwriting stuff today, but what I did find was so huge. I am not joking you. I'm going to send you the link. It only it strips everything down the the civil servant the civil service manual strips everything down out of the constitution and gets right down to the civil service. And it is huge because it cuts right to the bone and gets right to the meat of the matter. I'm not joking you. Yeah, see, the, where, they're, where they're getting their grant is by the voter registration card. That's the biggie. I know. I've, I've, I've seen this stuff go around and around. It, it still falls together, you know, in coherency. Uh, but, yes, I have to agree with you. Is they, uh, the, um, the Franchise Tax Board says that there are several ways that they consider they have persona and subject matter jurisdiction over an individual. And the the, uh, the voter's registration is only one of about 16 to 20 of them that they tie you together. Uh, and, uh, right. yeah, there's there's other that, ways that they tie That's the biggest it. underwriting that we have out here because all the bills and everything that the state uh, Congress and the federal Congress write, they have to have funding for them. And where do they get their funding? From us, that we granted them the access to our Social Security account, okay, to write liens against our assets. Yeah, I didn't know that part, but I, I can probably say right now, after reading what I uh, saw in this code here, the Social Security, along with the Public Health Services uh, and the, the Civil Service Defense Act, when you got those three as their main places that they get their sources, you can damn well bet that that's probably true what you're saying. Yeah, but it all comes through Congress, okay? Congress has to, to uh, 
authorized the bill. Yeah, okay? it actually they write bills. It actually states we, it in here. It they actually give them the funds. Yeah, it actually states it in here. Uh, they go into memorandum of understanding for local agencies. Is that if it is not a if it's not in any questionable consideration under memorandum of understanding and or not in compliance, the the issue is already automatically granted. They don't even have to go through Congress, but if there's an issue, Congress steps in as to adjudicate whether or not it's in compliance and or it's it it, it is um, uh, w within the bounds that they're w with their intent. It, it states it in this set of codes that I just read off. Yeah, see, that's what it is. The state bills and laws that are passed, okay, which all laws are really bills, okay, they've got to have funding for the law that they're passing. They're really just passing bills of exchange, and then they're getting us to pay for those bills. Yeah, okay? no, I see how it works. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, see, that's it's, a, all, it's all a money game. Yes, and it, it includes uh, instrumentalities, agencies that are not connected to the civil service. But one thing is for sure, this manual clarifies the distinct difference between an unauthorized agency, of which has to go through an authorized agency. And the beauty about it, it this is the constitutional civil uh, basic manual information that you were saying that we have to apply for in order for them to come back into compliance to us saying that we're pulling out the underwriting for their programs because of the fraudulent considerations. The other part that I found this morning is I went in and found out that no public office can profit, and it goes it's right in the civil service manual. I'm not joking you. It says that they cannot in any degree as a uh, public civil servant they cannot use that office for profiteering. It's right in this manual. They're not, yeah, in the civil service side, they cannot operate for profit. That's right. In the public side, okay, the public system, they, they are strictly a for-profit organization. But the problem they've got there is the conflict of interest. I was working on the conflict of interest yesterday, and it's, I went into all the laws, and it ties right together with the civil servant. It says that if you're an oath person, you cannot hold two offices. It says it right in the code. Yeah, yeah. And see, that's what, but see nobody has contested it that there's a difference between civil and public. Yeah, they call it. Uh, Everybody thought they were all the same. They they call it political. The, the what you're trying to identify yesterday it says. Yeah, political is political is public. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they're. They actually said it yesterday that holding two hats of where you're using a public servant office is uh, it, it you're forbidden as to participate in any political, uh, and that's what they call it. They call it civil servant as opposed to political. Right. That, it, so that yeah, was the exact political in the dictionary. You will see that it is a, it correlates right to the public side. No, I got it. Public government. No, I got it. I mean, I, I was just giving you feedback of what I found yeah. yesterday. It, uh -huh. it said that uh, if they're functioning from a political point of view, and you're only subject to the civil servant point of view, is that is where you call it for what it is. Their political arena of having a bankruptcy should not, in any capacity, of, uh, reflect back onto yourself. Uh, a woman that I spoke to yesterday gave me a code that actually brings it home. It's under uh, 4 U.S.C., uh, what was it, 72? Uh, where's my notes on that? Uh, but uh, I've got it, yes, 72. What it says is that whatever was created or under the control of uh, the political arena is based off of Washington, D.C., and that includes anybody that's receiving any grant aid from the United States is considered an extension of that and has no it has no jurisdiction or authority over the regular people. I mean, right. it goes right into it. It goes right yeah, into so you it. You hit them up, or uh, basically, uh, if they come after you, you say, are you political or are you uh, civil? No, you just tell them. You get pulled over yeah. by a cop. You, you say, are you familiar with uh, 4 U.S.C. No, section? Don't, don't say that. I just ask them, are you operating in the civil capacity or the public capacity. If you're operating in the public capacity, I have 
no interface with you because I will not be an undersigner for you. Yeah. If I have violated something in the civil capacity, then I had to have caused harm. Yeah. And basically, I don't think I caused harm, so why did you stop me? Yeah. Exactly. So if for commercial gain, anytime that they write you a citation for something that there's no injured party, they have just departed away from the civil side and that they're engaged with the color of law, basically, is what it means. Yeah, a conspiracy to defraud. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, oh, big time. Yeah, no, I, I, th I think we're getting clearer, and we're getting clearer, and with this civil servant manual... Uh, you can't believe! I feel like a kid in a candy shop today. I, every everything I read out of this is it, it gets right down to brass tacks. And if you know what we know, you know exactly what they're saying here. You know exactly what they're saying. So yeah, uh, see, um, uh, when uh, Sheba went to court, okay, she just gave that uh, one document that I had uh -huh. that. Uh, overt action document, okay? That was all that she had. And she gave that to the prosecuting attorney, uh -huh. okay? Never said anything, just gave that to it, okay? They called her court case the very last one on the books. The judge, the prosecutor, and I don't know who all else, they went behind closed doors. Uh, then they came out and uh, dismissed everything. <laughs> well, everybody's been asking me for that case because they heard me over at the Equitable Share Group. I had mentioned that we had a win under what uh, you have been teaching everybody, and everybody wanted the case, and I, I had nothing to give them. <laughs> yeah, and it's just that one document. I mean, you know, people ought to print that out and have that handy. Yeah. And basically, then uh, just uh, the other one is... Uh, that I've tried to work on, that I can't get on the internet to send it out, yep. is uh, the three items. You basically, uh, first thing you say is, I renounce all underwriting that uh, you are associated with. And then the second one is, I allege a conspiracy to defraud of, on your behalf. And uh, the third one is, uh, this any action is going to be moved up to a civil court case. Uh, it will no longer be under the jurisdiction of the public. Would you consider the False Claims Act a civil uh, jurisdiction and authority? Uh, I'd have to take a look at it. Uh, because what, what they're doing, in my investigations, you can go in camera based off the fact that this is a... Uh, a political trade secret, and by them implying that you're a participating party with that is a false claim. So anytime that they write you a citation and they're in their political arena for color of law, that means it's a false claim because you're not a participating party with it. Yeah. So anyway, okay, so it looks like it's all coming together in my head, and that's a good thing because once this stuff gel gels with me, I can help other people. <clears throat> Okay. All right. Uh, you get take care, and I'll talk to you later, Brett. Yeah. Hey, uh, Pat, take care, t take it easy with that chainsaw. One of my friends down the street just cut his finger off with an axe trying to cut wood. <laughs> yeah. No, I was saying, hey, can well, you? That's, that's you Californians. <laughs> yeah. Well, I asked him. I says, uh, can you feel anything? He says, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, take it easy with those that that that, that type oh, of yeah. equipment. All right, talk to you after a while. Okay, uh, bye. You take care. Uh. Bye.